Hey, this is John Buck. I'm back with the third video in my series, and this one is about uh, uh, the MBDR beamformer in the array gain. We've just found it for the, on the previous two videos, we reviewed array gain, and we solved for the, the CBF for the conventional beamformer array gain for the case where we have, well, in the general equation where the background noise is not white, and then uh, uh, simplified that expression for the case where we have a single interferer and white noise, sort of the simplest non-trivial example. And now for this one, we're going to do this for MBDR. So we have to remember now we have a different choice for the array weights, right? The array weights are now going to be uh, alpha times SN inverse W. That is what we get for the, the array weights here, where alpha is the, the gain we use for the unity gain constraint. I'm sorry, not W here. What am I thinking? This is V naught. Right, so it's the manifold for the look direction times the SN inverse times the gain term to make sure that we have unity gain in the desired look direction. So alpha becomes all of this to the minus one. And so setting up for the fact, well, we're going to have this <coughs> uh, V of N hanging around here. Uh, we want to uh, simplify that sum eventually. Um, Something's not right about that. No, I've got the wrong expression for array gain, don't I? This got ahead of I was MBDR on the brain. This should not be inverted. Right? If we look back a couple of pages earlier, right, well that was the CBF version. Right, this should be W times S N bar times W. So right, this is W S N bar. So now we've got this. So sort of planning ahead, it would be nice to put alpha and W in terms of SN bar, <clears throat> which isn't too hard to do if we actually plug alpha in and remember that uh, we've got SN is equal to sigma naught squared times SN bar, right? This is the sort of power scaling and this is the spatial structure. So if I take the inverse of both sides, I can do that easily because sigma naught squared is just a scalar, right? A, a, a one by one number. So SN inverse is equal to sigma naught squared inverse SN bar inverse. And so if I plug this in up here and also for alpha, I'll have, I'll bring the alpha down to the denominator. And so I'll have V naught Hermitian, the SN inverse becomes a sigma naught to the minus two I'll pull out front. All right, so that's this piece here coming out in front. Sn bar inverse v naught, and then on the up above, I have an Sn inverse, so that also becomes this. So I have another sigma naught squared times Sn bar inverse times v naught. So again, I plug this in here and also within alpha, and brought it in. And what happens is these sigma naught squareds cancel out, which sort of makes sense, right? It says if I scale this matrix by a constant, as if, if I'm scaling this matrix by a constant, and it appears in the numerator and denominator, those constants are going to cancel out because if, I, if I've rescaled it uh, in the numerator, I won't need, I can also rescale the unity gain part, and I'll be left with something like this, V naught Hermitian, SN bar inverse V naught, or we could write this just to sort of be a little fancy. We could call this alpha bar, which is the version using SN bar. Right, so if I think of it that way, then this becomes alpha bar times SN bar inverse. Oh, stupid drawing program, stop that. Try that again. Much neater. Sn bar inverse times V naught. So we can write it this way, recognizing we're probably going to want to cancel some things here. So now let's go on and find our, using this version for the weights, let's go find our MBDR array gain. So the array gain for the MBDR case, MBDR will be 1 over W Hermitian, which is alpha bar times 
Sn bar inverse. Oh, I had should have had the v naught first. Sorry. V naught Hermitian. Sn bar inverse. So this is right. This here is my first. This is W Hermitian, which is again this is uh, Sn is a Hermitian matrix, so so is its uh, inverse, and so taking the Hermitian doesn't actually change Sn inverse. Does change v naught, and w alpha bar is real, so taking the conjugate doesn't matter. So I've got that W Hermitian times S n bar times W again, which will be alpha bar S n bar inverse v naught. It's one over, pull the alpha bar squareds out front. I can then look, oh, I should have labeled this. So this was, this term here was my W. And when I look at this, well, let me just write it all out and not cancel too much too fast. V naught Hermitian, SN bar inverse, SN bar times another SN bar inverse V naught. So when this all settles, we can look at it and say, well, I could take these two, multiply them together, matrix by its inverse just leaves me i, and so that simplifies what's left to be 1 over alpha bar squared v naught Hermitian Sn bar inverse, right? That's this term here surviving times v naught. And now we can go back and say, oh, but this, if I look on the previous page, is this term here is just 1 over alpha, right? Uh, alpha bar. So here's my alpha bar. And so this thing here is 1 over it. So this is alpha bar to the minus 1 right here. And so I'm left with just 1 over alpha bar, which is equal to uh, v naught Hermitian Sn inverse times v naught. So my array gain now takes a, a slightly different form. This is all upstairs again, remember, because alpha was 1 over it. Right? If I went back here, alpha bar is 1 over this thing, so 1 over alpha, I just get this up in the numerator. Right, so this is my, my form here. Uh, in general, for the MBDR, that I'll have V naught times this uh, times uh, the normalized spatial covariance matrix times V naught. So now that's the general expression. Let's look at our example. All right. So again, in our example. We have that S of n, the sigma 1 squared, v0, v1, v1 Hermitian, plus sigma n squared i. And so, and we, and we had earlier, we, we could also use our expression for uh, S, we found expressions for Sn and Sn inverse. Right, last week, when we looked at the generalized side lobe canceller, we had this formula here. We saw that the inverse of Sn would be uh, sigma n squared to the minus 2i minus this. And so we can use this to get this sort of similar projection formula. Oh, where we should remind ourselves that beta out is a little different from the beta we saw for the CBF and that it includes the factor of n from the array gain. So this will be, beta, the output would be n times inr over n times inr plus 1. So this would be the Wiener gain for the beamformer output of a CBF, like this is what we would see for a CBF steered at the interferer, right? So this is, again, different than the beta in we saw without the factor of n's a minute ago. But in this form here, I can now use some factors to clean this up. Right? We saw earlier we can write things like this, right, as, as Sn inverse is equal to sigma naught uh, to the minus 2, right, 1 over the, the power here times S bar to the minus 1, 
And so I can move this to the other side and get that the Sn bar inverse I'm after is sigma naught squared times Sn to the minus 1. And so if I, if I solve for this by putting the sigma naught squared up here and, and rearrange the terms, I'll get this term here. And now I say, oh, but I can also plug in for this, in this case, I know for this specific example that I can write sigma naught squared as sigma 1 squared over sigma, sigma n squared. over sigma n squared times i minus the beta of the output times p sub v1, the projection matrix for v1. And so this on the right hand side becomes, this is i and r plus 1. So I have the interfere to noise ratio, how loud is the interfere compared to the background noise, plus 1 times i minus the output wiener gain times the projection matrix for the interfere. And so this says, again, as, as beta goes to zero, this just devolves to i. As, as the interfere gets very loud, this term becomes one, and it's like notch steering. So that all sort of makes sense. Now let's remember where we want to plug this in to where we got to on the previous page. right? We want to say I want v naught times this thing I just found, Sn bar inverse times v naught. So let's see where that gets us. Right, so rewriting the formula, we get our MBDR formula looks like this, and now I'm going to put the expression we just found in the middle for Sn inverse and see what we get. Let me uh, move things up a little bit to make myself give myself some space to work. So I get that when I substitute in, and now I can see, well, that this INR plus 1 is a term I can bring out front. So I get INR plus 1 out front, and then this becomes V0 Hermitian V0. Well, that's magnitude of V0 squared minus the output beta times v naught Hermitian times the projection matrix for v1 times v naught. Well, and we saw earlier in the uh, CBF case that, right, that this is very close to the cos squared, that we can write this Is, is I just need an extra n in the denominator, so it, to balance it, I need one in the numerator. I end up with n co squared v naught v1 for this quadratic with the projection. It's n times that quadratic. And so, and, and this term here for a plane wave is n also. So if I write that to simplify things, I get inr plus 1 uh, times the uh, Right. Fuck me. So tight. 